I usually try to stay away from negative content, or at least turn a negative into a positive, and today is going to be no different. I've been developing games in some capacity for at least the last 20 years. I remember in middle school making early maze games, point and click adventures, and other simple games and sharing them on a floppy disk or CD. Since I've been developing games longer than some of you have probably been alive, I don't really consume a lot of YouTube game dev content. I do enjoy an episode of Game Maker's Toolkit from time to time. I also enjoy watching a couple of devs make progress on their games, but I'm not watching getting started tutorials, or those channels that are catering to people who are just starting to dip a toe into game dev. As even when I was learning, that segment of YouTube was barely growing, and by the time it was cemented, I had already been making games for the better part of a decade, instead learning from books and online written tutorials. However, ever since this pirate software drama started to pop off, I've sort of gone down the rabbit hole of YouTube game devs, and I don't really like some of what I see. Now, I'll never tell anyone what to watch or what not to watch, or shame people who are just making motivational content for people to make games, but that also doesn't mean that I won't express my qualms. First thing that I've noticed is everyone has a course. The YouTube channel is just a vehicle to get you into their course and into their system. Most of these devs that are selling you these courses, especially the marketing ones, wouldn't be able to sustain themselves if it wasn't for YouTube and those courses. Their games usually aren't that much of a success, and honestly, some aren't even that good. Their claim to fame is just, hey, I made this thing, and I'm charismatic, and I'll teach you how to get rich making the same thing, when honestly, I don't even think any of that is a good approach to learning game development in the first place, as game development, especially on the solo side, is a combination of, of a bunch of specialized skills, meaning you should learn how to program, you need to learn some art and animation skills, as well as design, sound, and maybe even music. These are all very specialized fields, which, if we're being honest, can take decades to learn and truly become an expert in. So I promise you, anyone who's trying to sell you a course that will teach you the overall framework of game design from start to finish is leading you down the wrong path. If I'm being honest, the path to really becoming a full solo game designer would be focusing on multiple specialties and couldn't be encompassed in a single course, probably not even five. Instead, it would likely look something more akin to your high school or college schedule, where you would have multiple subjects, where sometimes even within those subjects, you'll have focuses on particular items, such as networking when it comes to programming, animation when it comes to art, and music theory when it comes to creating music. Knowing full well that those specialties within those disciplines are only there to teach you a subsection to give you a greater understanding of the overall topic. You can make a song without understanding music theory, create a piece of art with no understanding of color theory, and even program software without the vaguest understanding of concurrency. However, each subject is so deep, there are literally books written on all three topics, and they're only a small piece of each discipline. So if someone's trying to sell you a course that will make you a master game developer when they encompass all these disciplines that are all very broad with a lot of depth, it's sort of a farce. Next up, we have the kind of YouTuber that makes motivational game development content, but there really isn't any substance to their work. They aren't teaching you how to program, draw, design, or anything. They're just there to inspire you, to keep you coming back because watching their videos make you feel good and it makes you feel accomplished. Now I understand not all of us can wake up at 6am on the weekend just to begin work on our passion project, but if you need this constant reassurance from a YouTuber, then honestly I don't think game development is really for you, at least not in the solo, hobbyist, or indie branch as hobbyist, indie, and solo game development really takes self-motivation. I hate to use this term, but you have to be a self-starter. And if you're not that kind of a person, it's either going to take you very long to finish your project, you're going to quit midway through, or you're just going to grow frustrated. Then the last ones that I see are those that teach you random techniques with a lot of bad practices, simplifying the game development process to those that don't understand the underlying systems of the game engines, ultimately resulting in horrible performance of their games. These people likely have never made a full game, so they haven't seen their consequences of their actions in practice. It's essentially the blind leading the blind, or at least heart of vision. Teaching people the wrong techniques and approaches can result in the performance of their game nosediving, and since they don't know how to diagnose this Frankenstein code, they either get stuck or demotivated, sometimes both, which is not something that you want to see for someone who's starting out in game development or any hobbyist. Now, I'll gladly tell you to go and make a game if you really want to. I mean, I've even made a tutorial video on it. 
However, I promise the game dev, and especially solo indie game dev, is not for everyone. It's rather difficult, but I'd argue that most people with a high school education are capable of creating at least a very simple game, such as Pong, with a very bit of learning. However, the actual art of game development is so much more than just that. You have to learn how to program, at least in some sense, even if you're just using that flowchart, drag and drop approach. But unless you have money to pay for an artist, you're going to need to learn how to draw, and at least some principles of animation. You're going to have to learn game design, world building, storytelling, and then sound and music, which on its own can take an entire lifetime to truly master. Oh, and then before I forget, you have to actually learn how to sell your game, so you're going to need to understand some sort of form of marketing. Then, unless you get a successful Kickstarter or some sort of crowdfunding, you'll have to work on the game in your spare time, between either work, school, or whatever else you have going on. It's a lot. So, who is indie game development for? Well, it's for the people who are self-motivated. You do something because you want to do it. It's for people who like to solve problems, puzzles, those who enjoy being challenged. It's for people who are willing to dedicate hours of their free time to create something that has a one in a million chance of being successful and not being demotivated by that because they at least enjoy the process. If you're not enjoying the game making process, then I don't think indie game development is for you. Now, you don't have to like all aspects of game development, but if you're indie, and especially if you're solo, you need to at least enjoy most of it. So what kind of people is game development not for? Well first, people who just want to world build. If the rest of what I described sounds horrible to you, maybe you should write a book instead, or create a tabletop game with a ton of lore. For someone who just loves to draw, Maybe instead create a comic book, or an animation, maybe an art book. For those who just love to design, maybe instead you make a mod for your favorite games. And those who just love to program, maybe instead you just contribute to some cool open source projects, or create game dev tools. If you really want to make a game, and you fall in any of those groups, maybe your path is to join a team. I promise you, sometimes working together can be a lot better than working alone, I know from experience. It's just that finding a team who wants to work on something that you actually want to make can sometimes be rather difficult. So sometimes you have to compromise and maybe not create the game that you've always wanted to make, but instead follow someone else's vision. I mean, that's what teamwork is anyways, right? It's all about compromise. This video is in no way meant to take away your motivation to make a game, but just remember, not everything needs to be a game. Game dev isn't for everyone, and that's okay. I love ice hockey and the UFC, but you're not going to see me step in the ring or on the ice anytime soon. So just find something that you love to do and do that. Don't fall for these YouTube motivational traps or tutorial hells. Instead, find something that moves you and then create something with that movement. And if you don't want to make anything, there's nothing wrong with just experiencing life. I mean, that's what it's here for anyways, right? Anyways, that's it for today, everyone. Thanks for watching and thanks for your time.